Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, God is just teaching us a lot, praise God. Remember, we, we are still talking about the judgments of God. Now, before going to the broadcast, can we call forth and make requests for our daily bread like the Lord has commanded us to? Join me right now as we declare with faith in your heart. Say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, yesterday, if you can remember, we, we touched on something very important that cuts across everybody. Praise God. And what's that? God's judgment concerning your meeting your needs. God's judgment concerning your supplies. Now, you see, so you, you, you find lots of believers having challenges in this area. And then they don't, they don't really know what to believe. They don't know what to believe. Now, God doesn't call us to be lazy. You must understand that. But then he calls us to walk the right walk. Now, number one, understand this, that God have never called you to walk by yourself to make ends meet. Now that itself is wrong. It's an error. See, the thought in your mind that, oh, I need to have a job so that I can make ends meet. That thought in itself is an error. The reason is an error. Now, if you are not a child of God, you've got to, I mean, that's okay. But if you are a child of God, that thinking in itself is an error. We walk because we have a purpose to fulfill. Are you getting what I'm saying? We walk because we have, um, we have this investment in us that we want to use to influence that influence the world and if you need to influence the world you would need to influence people so now god can send you into a place to get a job so that your light can shine in that place and the purpose for god sending you there is not so that you will make money oh man i just need a place where i'll make money no god gives blessings to his beloved even while they sleep. So, so get this settled. You know, you see the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hear me now. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Why? Because it is the power of God that leads to salvation to everyone who believes it. So, now, you have your way of thinking already. Your thought pattern is in, in, a part of, is in this way, you know, I, I have to walk, I have to, I have to, you know, yeah. Now, you come to believe the gospel. And what is the gospel? The gospel is the good news of God's love expressed to man. That's the summary of the gospel. The good news of God's love expressed to mankind. That's the gospel. Now, when it comes to meeting my needs, what is the good news there? The good news is the fact that God has already taken care of all the needs that will ever show up in my life. And now he calls me to say, seek ye first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. He didn't say seek first the kingdom and then when you now have the kingdom, I say now I have the kingdom so I'm, I know I'm going to heaven now. Now let me go and look for a job. Let me go. No, that's not what he's talking about. He is talking about, now what does it mean seek the kingdom? He's not talking about come to church and get saved. He's talking about finding the mind of God consigning everything. That's the kingdom. 
So why do you want to work now? Man, if I can just get a job, you know how we think sometimes, if I can just get a job, I'll be able to feed my family, I'll be able to pay my bills, I'll be able to do all these things. It sounds right, doesn't it? It sounds like logic, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But you see, remember, Isaiah told us something. God was speaking through Isaiah. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. And my ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above there, that's exactly how God's thoughts are. Far from man's thoughts and way of reasoning. Now, that doesn't in, in itself mean that we are so far from God's thought that we cannot reach it. He is telling you how you, you don't just wake up and say, I think I know that this is what God wants me to do. That's what he's trying to tell you. It takes discipline. It takes submission and continuous submission until you begin to understand what God thinks. And, and I tell you, you know, like Isaiah said, it, it, this is how it works. In Isaiah 11, it says, precept must be upon precept. Line must be upon line. See? So, God will begin to teach you one step at a time. One step at a time. And while he is doing this, your part is to be submitting day by day to his thoughts. So now, you are thinking of getting a job. Then what's the purpose in your heart? Because see, sometimes God can lead you into getting a job. But then if you don't know the purpose, when the storm of life hits that job, you may lose it because you didn't know why you were there in the first place. Because now when the storm of life hits, your first point is, the, your first response becomes fear. Why fear? Oh, they're about to take my daily bread. This situation is about to take my daily bread. That's what you think. Now, the moment that's in your heart, it has sent panic all over your whole being. And then soon you begin to respond to it. And that's why you will tell a lie to keep your job. That's why you would, you know what I'm talking about? You would do wrong things just to secure that job. Because you're thinking, man, I cannot afford to lose my daily bread. Now, what if you understand perfectly that that job is not your daily bread? Your heavenly father gives you your daily bread, even though you are walking somewhere. What if you come to that place of understanding? Now, I, I, I'm telling you the truth. Now, when your job is at that, because the storm of life will surely come. It doesn't matter how well you got a vision that God told you. You know, so just like some people, they say, you know, when they, they got married, they prayed, they fasted. You know, and then they got married and they, they saw a vision. There were several prophecies to confirm that this person is your wife. This person is your husband. Independent prophecies. So there's no way they could have coined that up. And so they believed that they were, they were entering into God's purpose. And now the challenge of life hits them. Now their first response becomes fear. I, I thought I prayed about this thing. Why is this happening? And that's the wrong way to respond. See? Because the way you, your, early, your first response to a situation may determine how that situation will end. If it will end in your victory or it will end in your loss or your defeat. It's all about your mindset. Now, the fact that God led you into something doesn't mean the challenges of life will not come. The challenges of life will come again. It came against Jesus. And guess what? Jesus was the word of God made flesh. Satan still came to tempt him. Jesus still faced challenges. He still feels, faced difficulty. You remember, he was in the boat with them and there was a storm. The disciples were so scared, they thought they were going to die that day. So they went to wake up Jesus and said, don't you care that we perish? I mean, they had to blot it out like that to him. Man, you, 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 this is wickedness. You, you're sleeping and we're here dying. Because, you know, now they knew, they were not thinking one bit that Jesus was going to die. So it's more like you, you are just sleeping and this, this wind will carry all of us away and maybe drown us. You, you just come out alive and, and then we may be gone. 
<laughs> Praise God. Now, now, that was their fear. That was their response. But when they woke Jesus up, what did he do? He looked around. Jesus didn't say, oh, wow, Peter, um, lock that. Hey, oh, pull. No, 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 no. He, he looked around and said, where is your faith? Oh, look, don't talk about us. There's a problem. Finish that problem. You can rebuke us. You understand? He said, where is your faith? Then he turned and said, peace, be still. I love that phrase so much. Why? Because the day the Lord made me understand what Jesus actually said. I was like, whoa. <laughs> He's got like, ah, 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 that's it. That's it. Peace, be still. There was peace when they started out that journey. And they started out that journey committing it, committing that journey in the hands of the Lord. And there was peace there. See? So now Jesus woke up to a storm. And then you know what he thought. We started out this journey in peace. We commissioned this journey into the hands of peace. So where is this trouble or turbulence coming from? It came to attack the, the, the peace that was reigning on that journey. So now Jesus, all he had to do as the deciding factor was to speak his authority to show who reigns. So he looked around, where is peace? And I can feel turbulence speaking to him. He said, no, we are the ones in charge here. Hey, peace, be still. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> now, you need to speak to your body sometimes like that. You need to speak to your finances when things are getting chaotic. You remember, how did I start this thing? Did I start this thing in turbulence? How did I start my marriage? Did I start my marriage in turbulence? Hey, we started it out in peace. We committed this whole journey in God's hands. Sometimes you're in a plane and everything is looking like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. How did you start that journey in the first place? Can you remember? Peace. I didn't tell you to leave. So wherever you've gone, wherever you've gone to, be here still. <laughs> yeah, that's what Jesus meant. Peace, be still. And the Bible said there was a great calm. So peace was just standing aside and letting turbulence, you know. And, and, and when Jesus stood up, he's the one that would decide. When he called back peace, huh, he just like lighting up the light in the house. Do you see the darkness trying to look for the door to rush out? No. You know, when everywhere is dark, you know, you're walking, everything is a bit chaotic. You hit your leg here, you do that, and then suddenly you turn on that switch and the light comes. What, what, what happens? There's going to be a great calm in your mind. Praise God. Yeah. Now, that's exactly what happened. Jesus turned on the light for peace to reign, and peace just swept, I mean, swept into that whole arena and brought calmness to the place. Why? Jesus was walking by the light of God. Now that's just, you see, now someone else will begin to look at the situation and trying to find a way to solve it. The same thing with your marriage. The same thing with your job. You started out this thing right. You believed so. Now there's a challenge. Don't respond in fear. Don't respond. Because when you respond in fear, everything you say will just be wrong. And the more you speak, the more you give Satan the advantage over you. Because he will use your own words to accuse you. See that? That's why you must be careful what you allow to come out of your mouth. Especially in turbulent situation. You must be careful. Don't blame the devil. When it comes to marriage, don't blame your spouse. No, 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 no. Don't try to look at what they did and say, this is the problem. Before you get to solving that problem. Now, now, yes, sometimes, you know, because the devil always look for a room. I mean, a, a doorway to come in. So he, someone will make a mistake. 
you know. But before you get to that point, always take charge of the situation and calm it. Hear me? Don't get into a situation and start a shouting competition. Don't get into a situation and start, a, a start in anger. This is rubbish. I cannot accept this. No, 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 no. While all that storm is raging, peace. We started this journey in peace. Peace be still. And now you start looking at that whole situation again. Like, how did we get here in the first place? This shouldn't have been done. Now you're doing this from the place of peace, not from the place of turbulence. Are you getting? Because I said, that's how God does things. That's why whenever he shows up in any turbulent situation in your life, guess the first thing he says, read your Bible. Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. Those that have calculated it said, he, he gave us fear not 365 times in the whole scriptures, in the whole Bible. Now they say one for a day. But let me tell you something. I'm sure he spoke much more than that. Praise God. Because you see, anytime Satan tries to go, fear not. Don't let fear into your heart. The moment you let fear into your heart, I bet you, the first movement you will go from that place is a sinking moment. And you don't want that to happen. Praise God. Our time is up today. Hey, I believe God is doing something in your life by these teachings. And then I want to hear your testimonies. I want you to share with us the things that you are learning from this broadcast. We we'll love to get all those feedbacks. And even as we continue to pray for you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.